Hey what's up you guys, welcome to this video. Today I thought I would do my top 10 Madonna albums. This has been a video that I've been wanting to make for ages. I've got a few comments saying that people want to hear my opinion on my favourite Madonna albums. So I thought, hey, let's do that today. As I say, for every list video I make, this is my opinion. Don't hate me if this is not yours. Um, these videos are really difficult to make and to logically put down my favourites taking into like critical acclaim, like my personal favourites and things like that. Um, Confessions is not on this list, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say that Confessions isn't on this list, it is an honourable mention, I do like the album, but I prefer all of these and I would say that I listen to more these albums than Confessions. I'm just gonna get that out of the way. At number 10, I have Like A Virgin. This album was released in 1984 and it was Madonna's second studio album. Her first self-titled Madonna album was released a couple years before. Um, I think that this album um, is really special because it sort of put Madonna on the map as a real powerhouse in the music industry. I think with the title track Like A Virgin combined with the, the music video for that as well as the uh, MTV Awards, VMAs I think it was, um, performance of her in the wedding dress literally having sex with the floor made her one of the most famous and controversial people of the early 80s. Um, and I really, really like this album. I kind of like Material Girl, Dress You Up, uh, Love Don't Live Here Anymore. Next, I have Madonna's American Life. Probably a lot of people didn't expect to see this Madonna record uh, on the list, especially over Confessions. I have to say that personally, this is uh, one of the ones I do go back and listen to quite a bit. Not for the whole album. American Life, Hollywood, Nobody Knows Me, Ecstatic Process. Uh, probably some of my favorites from this album was released in 2003 and critically at the time it wasn't acclaimed that well but looking back critics are sort of more warmer to the album um, noting it as one of Madonna's more sort of different and you know she's trying a different sort of style of music very political um, but also autobiographical so it's quite nicely sort of infused the two sort of themes together which is why it's on the list. Next up we have Madonna's Erotica which was her fifth studio album. This album came hot off of the smash hit which was I'm Breathless which had obviously one of her most if not the most famous Madonna song Vogue. Critically it's very you know well acclaimed it is a very with most of Madonna's work it is very autobiographical but this one has a very sort of uh, sort of conceptual type of theme to it, um, sort of about love and romance and you know lust and things like that. At the time, like although it was now, it's better critically acclaimed. At the time, it's got a lot of controversy. I mean, look at the fucking back alone. Very controversial, um, very overtly sexual in classic Madonna nature, and she got a lot of backlash for that. Um, which she sort of responded uh, in her next album, Bedtime Stories. But I love it. I think it's such a class album. So many favourites from this is the title track Erotica, Deeper and Deeper, Bad Girl, Thief of Hearts, um, and Rain. I love Rain. I love the music video for Rain. I think it's just a classic Madonna album. So next up we have Madonna's I'm Breathless, as I just mentioned, um, probably just on the list because of Vogue. If it didn't have Vogue, it would not have such weight and such memorable uh, moments for me this album, although I do really like the style to it. It's a very sort of a swing kind of uh, vibe very similar to sort of like a Frank Sinatra or a Tony Bennett. Obviously it's, it's more of the soundtrack to the film Dick Tracy which is one of Madonna's films that she was in. Um, but I really like this album, it's really nice to listen to. It does offer a different side of Madonna as well as some amazing vocals in the song sort of sooner or later. I love Back in Business, um, Hanky Panky as well is great and obviously Vogue. Um, is why it's on the list. Next up we have uh, Madonna's first album, the self-titled Madonna album. This album to me is very special. I grew up listening to very early Madonna. It was my mum's favourite, my stepdad's favourite. They loved listening to sort of early Madonna, Lucky Star, Borderline, Think of Me, Holiday, and, and the first records that I ever listened to or saw was uh, the single of Madonna's Holiday and on the B side it was Lucky Star, I think, or vice versa. Um, and since then I was always hooked on 80s music and that's where I got my sort of love for the 80s music from. Um, and then that those songs have always just stuck with me. It gives me a sort of nostalgic feel. So this is more personal for me to be on this high on the list. But as well as that, I think it's a really cracking album and I do really enjoy listening to it, even to this day. Um, and I think for her first album, studio album, it is not bad at all. 
Next up, I've got a sort of another personal favorite for me is the Rebel Heart album release in 2015. Going into it, I didn't know what to expect. You know, she, you know, not as uh, not as young as she used to be, obviously. Um, but I still think that that doesn't mean a thing. She's still kicking and doing so, so good in her career. And I love the artwork to this album. I think it is so cool. Um, and I really, really enjoy um, a lot of songs on here. Ghost Town, Living For Love, Bitch I'm Madonna, Wash All Over Me. So many, so many good songs on here. And it's just a really well-rounded album. I honestly do think it's got so many sort of different themes and conceits of the album, sort of heartbreak and love and lust, sort of the things Madonna's always been talking about and is always going to talk about, um, but bringing a new sort of style to it, which I really enjoy. Also, this album was co-produced by some of the biggest names in music. Uh, Avicii, Diplo, uh, Kanye West, like some really big names that help make it the album that it is. Next up I have a Madonna, another Madonna album that I sort of grew up listening to which was True Blue. Uh, one of my favourite album artworks of all time as well, very iconic. Um, this album's really nice. It's her third studio album and I think it, it's really Madonna hitting her stride in, early on in her career. Really getting into it and just doing really really well. Her vocals have sort of never been better. They were so strong in this album with the songs like Live to Tell, The Controversial, Papa Don't Preach, Open Your Heart, White Heat. Um, it's, it's just a really well-rounded album. I think every song on here is a hit um, and it is just really good. The Live to Tell is probably one of my all-time favourites and it, it's just such a well-rounded album. Okay, so at number three, I have Madonna's Bedtime Stories release in 1994. This was the, basically the response to all the backlash she got from Erotica. Uh, that's not basically what it is, but like with the song Human Nature, which is one of the all-time greatest Madonna songs in my opinion, just comes at backlash. Madonna does not sit down, she does not stop, she does not chill. She is fighting back, as always, um, being the great that she is. Uh, I love this album so much, it's full of so many different songs. It's quite a conceptual album as well, also very autobiographical in the same sort of light. It is really one of my all-time favourite Madonna albums. Uh, Take a Bow, Secrets, um, obviously Human Nature, Bjork co-wrote the title track Bedtime Story and listening to that you can really tell that Bjork had something to do with it in the best possible way. It's such a different sounding song and it's so good to just like vibe out to. No faults, one of my all time favourites. But I actually have the, I have the album on CD, I can't find it, I think it's in my car, but this is one of my favourite songs from the album, which is Ray of Light, released the year I was born in 1998. Um, such a huge fan of this album. It is really probably the best Madonna work ever. Um, critically, it's her best acclaimed album. Her vocals are amazing. Uh, this was her first album as a mother as well, and I think it just really spun her sort of perception of life and she's got a new sort of feelings and meanings for the world and it is explained beautifully throughout this album. With bops like Ray of Light, Power of Goodbye, Frozen, Murga, she sort of comes to terms and deals with her mother's death and nothing really matters. Some really good songs in here making it a really unique and special listen and this was her seventh studio album as well so it's it's from day one she's just been doing so good in her career and i think this is probably the highlight that being said personally uh, i gotta give uh, my top pick to like a prayer like a prayer again is one of those albums and the title track such a well-rounded album full of hits smash hits is probably her most famous work everyone knows like a prayer everyone knows the the music video for like a prayer which got her banned from the Vatican. They condemned the video, condemned the song, and banned her from the Vatican, which I just think is the most badass thing ever. So many good songs in this album. Like a Prayer, Promise to Try, the collaboration with Prince, Love Song, very underrated song, I love listening to that. Promise to Try, uh, Cherish, Express Yourself, and Dear Jesse. probably all my favorites from the album. Full of so many different sort of musical themes. It's got like gospel, soul, funk, pop, everything in there that you could that you could want, dance, everything is just jammed into this album and it makes it my favourite Madonna record. Thank you guys for watching, that is this video all done. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and just put in the comments if you want me to do any other videos, just give me a comment and maybe I'll do them. I'll see you in the next video, goodbye.